Hi there and welcome to Make It Monday. This is Dawn McVeigh. A couple of weeks ago for the June Paper Tray Countdown, I created a card that uh, had a pocket on the front of the card that I had created using the Edgers dies. So for today's video, I thought I'd show you how to create your own pockets using the Edgers dies. Pockets that you can use on your cards, scrapbook layouts, or any other project you can dream up. Okay, so let's get started. Here's the card that I mentioned that I um, made for the June Paper Tray Countdown just a couple weeks ago. Uh, I used the Edgers number no. 1 die here on this pocket, and as you can see, I made the pocket so that it would pretty much fill up the entire front of the card. The first thing you're going to want to do when making pockets like these is to consider how much space you have to work with on your project. If you're going to put a pocket on a scrapbook layout, for instance, you just need to be mindful of how much room do you have to work with, how big or small do you need the pocket to be in order to fit that space. If you are going to use the pocket on a card, if the card is horizontally oriented, you might want to make your pocket a little bit wider and shorter, or um, if your, your uh, card is vertically oriented, you might want to make a taller, skinnier pocket like this one here. I've used the Edgers number no. 2 die to create that pretty little border across the top of the pocket. For today, I thought we would use the Edgers number no. 3 die. In fact, I'm going to use the smaller of the two. And we're going to make this card here. And as you can see on this card, I've decided to use that Edgers die twice to get a really cute double border. These kind of pockets are really popular to buy ready-made. You can buy them in craft color or some, you know, just basic envelope colors. But um, just by making them yourself, you can totally customize them to whatever project you're working on, whether it be um, the colors that you need to customize or the stamping that you put on them or, or whatever. So it's really a great way to, to um, add some detail and interest to your project. And with just an Edgers die and your cardstock, you're good to go. So let's get started. For today's pocket, I've started out with a strip of Simply Chartreuse cardstock. Um, this one is cut to three and a fourth inches by six and three fourths. Like I was saying earlier, mainly just consider how wide you need it to be first. You want to keep in mind whatever you're tucking inside it, you need to have room on either side for the adhesive or your stitching or whatever you're going to do to it to seal the pocket up there still needs to be room in the middle of the pocket for your gift card or whatever to slide down into it so keep that in mind when you decide how wide you want it to be for today I'm going with three and a fourth inches wide and six and three fourth inches long and again if you make it too long you can always trim it down as you go so start longer if you're unsure so I've got the Edgers die here and I'm going to take just a little piece of scotch tape. I'm going to make sure that I get this lined up right in the center of the die. I'm going to put a tiny little piece of tape right there on the edge to hold it in place and now I'm going to run it through my Big Shot. Okay, so what I've got left is this little bit here and the scrap I'm going to save that piece of tape. We'll use that again here in a second. And so now I can see that this is going to be the front edge. These dies do have a definite front and a back edge once you die cut the cardstock. So now I want to score this. For today's um, little pocket, I'm going to score it at about three and a half inches. But again, you can make yours as long or as short as you need it to be. I'm sorry I said three and a half, I meant two and a half. So right at two and a half, we'll score it. And now when I fold it up you can see the beginning of the pocket starting to form. Now I'm going to use the die again across the top here, but it looks to me like that's going to be just a little bit too long. I want the back to be a little bit smaller, as you can see on my card here. I'm going to want to trim off maybe a fourth of an inch. So now we're ready to use the, die, the Edgers die again. This time, 
you can see if this is the front edge, this is going to be the front edge also of the back portion of the pocket. So I'm going to flip it over, line it up, use that little bit of tape again, and run it through the big shot. So now we've got our die cut pocket. Just peel this off. Now before we seal it up, whether you stitch it or just use adhesive or whatever, you might want to do some stamping on your pocket to um, dress it up just a little bit. So I've got a couple of images here that are from the Matte Stack 2 collection stamp set. I love these pretty little flourishy brackets and such. I'm going to use this one just on the inside of the back portion of the pocket right up at the top. I am using ripe avocado ink here by the way. Now I've got another one. This one I'm going to want it to be on the front of the pocket so I'm going to flip that open so it's a little easier to stamp. I'm going to put it down toward the bottom side of the, the bottom edge of the pocket. And now I've got a tiny little For You sentiment. This is from the Matte Stack 4 collection set. Those Matte Stack sets are super versatile. If you don't have them, you might want to consider them. I use them a ton. So I'm going to stamp the For You just over to the right a little bit inside that little frame. And now I'm ready. I I've stamped it off to the right a little bit so that I can put a little flower right here in the front of the pocket. So um, it's actually ready to be sealed up and like I said earlier you could stitch it with a sewing machine. I love the finished look that gives but if you're not a seamstress, you don't have a sewing machine, you just don't want to mess with it or whatever, just get out your score tape and put a little strip on either side of the inside of the pocket this is the 1 4 inch score tape. They do make a 1 8 inch, which I do not have at the moment, but if you have the 1 8 I'd recommend the, the thinner strip because it'll just give your pocket a little more room inside there for your whatever's going inside it. So then just fold it up, seal the edges, and you've already got an adorable little pocket that's ready to roll. I'm not quite finished dressing mine up though, so I'm going to use the, this is the Beautiful Blooms 2 number 3 die. This is the middle sized one, and I've die cut three little um, vintage cream felt flowers. It's just the perfect little size to fit right in the center here. I'm going to fan them around a little bit, and I've got a Simply Chartreuse button that I'm going to stitch them right to I'm going to stitch the button right through all of the layers of the flower. This is um I keep a needle and threaded just about all the time with some of this rustic jute button twine or the rustic cream button twine. Makes it nice and easy when you're doing buttons like this. Then I'm just going to tie it in a pretty little bow. The twine will cooperate. Just trim off the excess. And I've also got some uh, spring moss cardstock that I've used the Sending You, this is the leaf die from the Sending You die collection. Die cut a couple of little cardstock leaves. And I'm going to use my score tape again to adhere these leaves. I flip them over and put some score tape on the back side, just down at the bottom. I like to leave the tips unadhered so that I can 
fluff them forward a little bit. I'm also going to put a bigger piece of score tape um, on the back side of my felt flower. This score tape, it'll just about glue anything down, I think. I'm kind of a fan. So now I flip the leaves back over. And I kind of get everything in position before I mash it all down. That looks about right. So then once I get it all kind of mushed down to the project, so it's nice and adhered, I like to kind of fluff the petals and the leaves forward a bit. And there you have it, a super cute little pocket that's ready to go on our card front. So now I've got some spring moss cardstock that I've already cut and scored to create a standard A2 sized card. It's four and a fourth inches by five and a half. I've also got a piece of the new road trip pattern paper. This is the map paper from that collection. I really like this paper. Just along this one edge, I'm going to add a strip of scalloped cardstock. This is some more spring moss cardstock that I die cut with the um, small scalloped border die. And I'm going to just use the scallops to get this lined up perfectly. You can see the scallops are perfectly symmetrical on either end. And then I'm going to trim off oops just trim off the excess just a wee bit more adhesive and it's ready to go on the card And all that's left is to adhere my pocket. So I've got some foam adhesive here. I'm just going to cut some foam squares to put on the back of the pocket. Peel those paper backings off. And there we go. I've got a little strip of um, vintage cream cardstock. This is two and a half by two and three fourths inches. Already cut so that it fits perfectly in the little pocket. So I'll use that to jot a little note to my recipient and then I'm going to tuck some um, money in here with it for the birthday gift for the birthday girl. So um, obviously I'll still put a message on the inside of the card but it's just a fun way to add another cute little detail to the outside of the card obviously this little bit that's inside the pocket you can dress that up any way you'd like the card that I made the other day for the countdown you can see I made a little tag and put some ribbon and a button on it really the sky's the limit you can do all sorts of things with it but um, it just makes a cute little sort of interactive detail for the front of your card that I just love so there you have it. We'd love to see your take on this week's Make It Monday project. If you would like to play along with the pocket challenge this week, be sure and head over to Nicole Hetty's blog where you can add the link to your own project. We'd love to see what you make. I hope you have fun with it, guys. That's it for me. This is Dawn McVeigh with Make It Monday. Thanks a lot. Have a great week.